Okay, we're going to talk about how to measure a surface profile. Um, it's usually going to be from dry grit abrasive blasting. Um, it's one method used to remove rust, mill scale, old coatings, and other contaminants from the surface. Um, there's another method that is used a lot of times, especially like in plants or in areas where they just don't want a bunch of grit flying around and interfering with workers and machinery. Uh, it's called a bristle blaster. Um, you know, you can get a surface profile on it, but you're not going to get the same type of an angular surface that you're going to get from, from abrasive blasting media, you know, in a high pressure uh, hose, you know, blowing it on a surface at a, at a high rate of speed. This is, you know, bristle blaster is, you know, pretty much a secondary method. Here's a, you know, close up of what a, a surface that has been abrasive blasted, you know, looks like. What we're going to determine is how to get the measurement. Now, the measurement is going to go from the peak to the valley. You know, you got your media that's blown in here at high speed. It's going to create this surface that's going to be rough uh, so that the that the coating can adhere to it. Uh, coating adheres to surfaces like that much better. Um, take, for instance, if you tried to to paint on a on a piece of glass. Uh, the glass is very, very smooth. You know, you can peel it off really easy, but if you go to paint on something that has a rough surface, it's gonna it's gonna adhere a whole lot better. That's one of the the main reasons why we we do abrasive blasting and, and we get these profiles. Um and that's uh you know gonna be the, the same measurement we're gonna get with a, a bristle blaster as well. It's just you are know, typically not going to get as much um you know some of the manufacturers say you can get you know more than what i've seen them get you know but i mean it's 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 really the company's preference whether they want to use a bristle blaster or not okay i'm going to demonstrate how to get a profile reading off of a blasted surface using two instruments. Now the, the number one instrument we're going to demonstrate is a, it's a dial micrometer. It's also known as a spring micrometer or an anvil micrometer. The number two instrument is going to be the DeFalsco replica tape reader. So um, to demonstrate this we're going to use a, a training tool that comes in a kit with this instrument if you choose to get the kit that has the training tool in it but what this does is it allows you to to develop your burnishing skills to the point to where it's an it gives you an acceptable reading uh, this thing actually has little serrations on the back we're just going to take one of these uh, test espresso films we're going to center it on the serrations like so and we're going to take the burnishing tool and we are going to go ahead and burnish the surface using either a circular or an XY pattern. You know, rub firmly. Make sure you get a, a good solid impression of the surface. Now you're going to do this to your blasted surface now. Before you use it on a blasted metal, uh, they want you to use this putty on, on the surface to clean it. Um, it's really just a 3M uh, putty that I got from DeFalsco. You know, you know, it, it, it's just going to get the dust and it's going to get the blast media so that you know our tools don't end up uh, having interference whenever it goes to read. Now, this particular uh, micrometer has a dial on it. You can start it at zero. Now this tape, since the tape is uh, two mils thick, uh, your final reading you're going to have to subtract two from it. So if you take a reading on this and it's five, you're going to subtract two mils. Or you can just dial it back from the start. You can just dial it back to eight. From zero that's that's taking your two off and then go ahead and center your 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 uh, your caliper 
in the middle of the of the film and we got 3.1 now this tool uh, tells you that you're looking for a 3.1 plus or minus 3 tenths of a mil so anywhere from 2.8 mils to 3.4 mils would have been acceptable this is perfect right here so since we got that let's move on to our replica tape reader and we're going to demonstrate in similar fashion now here's a few settings on this uh, that you're going to want to set up to begin with uh, one of them is every time it comes on you're going to want to press these two buttons together to give you a, a zero reading zeroes it out we have it set to to extra coarse tape you're going to want to make sure you got it set for the right tape it'll probably tell you if you got the wrong tape in there so we'll go ahead and put that on there we will burnish Now, the Presso Film manufacturer says that you can use the, the corner of, uh, of their little case that the film comes in, in a pinch. Uh, I've seen people use, you know, like your, your end of a, of a pen, you know, you know, just a little to, to do that with. Now, the I haven't seen where the manufacturer actually recommends that. Let's see what we come up with on here. We're going to go ahead and zero it out again just so. Start over fresh. All right, let's see what we get. 3.3. .3. So now remember, we can get up to 3.4 and, and still be there. So. 3.2. I mean, we're looking for 3.1 plus or minus uh, 0.3. So that's an acceptable measurement right there. The thing that I'd like to, to show you as far as like these test X tapes, because um, what happens is, is that if you need them to put on a report and you don't put this this uh, tape back on something that's going to, you know, preserve the sticky substance on the back. Uh, it ends up getting uh, contaminated with dust and dirt and whatever, and then it won't stick to the report. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to stick it on something that has a repelling surface, you know, like a plastic book back or something like that. And I always just, I'll write the, the weld number if there was a weld, and then I'll put the you know the profile reading on it you know if it's a bigger structure you know I might have to use a numbering system where I put a one and then I'll just you know have a notebook where I have a, a reference where it goes to but that's just something to preserve these uh, these uh, uh, films if you need them for documentation later on 